Hey world, um, on this session, uh, I guess this is something that I've been uh, wanting to talk about for quite some time. Um, it goes back to my college years, and uh, for those of you who may or may not have seen it, um, it is a play by Eve Onsler. Um, so if those of you who recognize that name, um, you're gonna know what type of performance and play uh, that I'm gonna be mentioning. It, of course, is going to be the Vagina Monologues. Um, and I mentioned that because there's just uh, so many things that I guess I want to comment on that. Uh, let me say that uh, when I saw it, I think back in 2002, 2003, somewhere along those times, um, it was a enjoyable show. Um, and, you know, enlightening, somewhat humorous, yeah. Um, but it's pretty much telling the story of women uh, coming of age, uh, pretty much female empowering um, their sexuality, um, just things that they have to endure um, in regards to just being a woman. Um, so with that, uh, you know, I can tell you that uh, while they were promoting the play and the shows um, on campus uh, the year that I was there. Pretty much they uh, promoted every single year, at least at college. Uh, so most of you in the college environment right now, um, if you haven't seen it, I would definitely uh, encourage you to go see it. But uh, I remember walking down the mall and that was where uh, a lot of groups would go through and try to recruit uh, a lot of people that just walked across uh, the mall where uh, it was in between classes. Um, they would just set up booths and tables and just whenever there was uh, a huge group of people walking through, usually around lunchtime, people getting out of lunch at 11 and 12, there would be like a group of girls that would be promoting the vagina monologues and they would always scream out come see our vaginas you know and uh, you know it's just humorous and, and fun um, at the time and when I went and saw the show of all of the monologues there I, can, I had to tell you that uh, my favorite uh, vagina at the time was the pissed off and angry vagina just because it was funny humorous um, it was great uh, that probably had was the best one. Um, you know, the others were kind of somber. But as opposed to Eve's answers, uh, vagina monologues, um, you know, that's pretty much encompassing and in telling, you know, women's voices, um, you know, just their struggles. And, you know, on the humorous side, yet serious side as well, you know, if they got the vagina monologues, you know, I want to get a band of guys together and form the Penis Chronicles, you know? It's, hey, it's pretty much the same thing. It's men's voices and, uh, you know, it's, as much as I guess women like to go through and just say that men supposedly have a one-track mind, you know, think about either just food, sex, and sleep, you know? Of course, of course, we're we're more than that. Just like you know, women are more than you know a great behind and a nice pair of tits or something. You know, um, those aren't my particular exact words. I didn't I didn't coin those words, but you know, it's pretty much the the same saying there. So, with that being the case, I mean, guys themselves, you know, there's more to us than as I mentioned, and more than the women give us credit for of. Uh, sex, sleep, and food, um, you know, being the breadwinner, uh, for some. So, let's so just go through my notes here to make sure I'm not missing any points, but I guess in regards to, you know, the Penis Chronicles, 
It will be, you know, we'll talk about our fears, you know, the issues that we're facing as guys, you know, of, we don't know what it's like, uh, at least I know that here in America, living here for, God, 25, 26 years, you know, what exactly does it mean to be a man, the gender roles that's supposedly separating the two, you know, when can we be weak, when can we cry, are we even supposed to cry, you know, are we supposed to be vulnerable and show that sensitive and soft side to women, or is it never, you know, and it's, there's always so many school of thoughts to that, it's, you know, of, just as in the vagina monologues of, you know, women going through their first you know, menstruation, masturbation, getting raped, you know, the mutilations and, and whatnot, you know, guys as well also have their stories, probably not in comparison to the mutilation and rape, but I mean, guys get picked on by girls uh, growing up, they have their own fears, their identities of being a guy, how to approach a girl, what is it that, you know, is expected of them, it's just, you know, in terms of what to seek in a, a relationship, what's the qualities, and everything that we supposedly know has always been supposedly written by a therapist or a psychologist on relationship, and it's always about women, you know, at least for the most part, is, you know, how many actually comes from the guy's perspective. You know, and really taken seriously for the most part and, and it's you know so much more on that so it's I guess if they have the vagina monologues they have you know the penis chronicles to I guess balance that out of you know trying to understand the genders and the sexes there and of course there's going to be criticisms from uh, both sides of the playing field, you know, in regards to sexuality, in regards to just, you know, who we are, um, what defines the gender, the issue that we have to face, you know, being on one side or the next there. So it's, it's a love and hate, you know, there's going to be praises and there's going to be criticisms, you know, that this is some stuff you shouldn't talk about or... You know, and I guess that just depends on how open-minded you are, how conservative you are, what's your point of views, you know, but I guess for the most part, you know, if you're watching my videos, hopefully you should be having an open mind, um, and if you're too conservative in your views or too far on the Republican side, you probably won't be liking my videos, um, so I try to... Uh, cater towards the more open-minded because, you know, that's how I feel I roll and, uh, you know, I really like to meet open-minded people who's not too stubborn and ignorant to actually know that they could be wrong, uh, not open to the idea that, you know, it's there's more to the world out there than just what in books and there's more than life experience that, you know, that can be fully understood with what's been recorded and written down. So it just varies, and I'm on nine minutes. All right, so I guess with that, I'll uh, leave you with a ending note of just telling you that uh, I really miss my college days, and uh, I can tell you about uh, a summer session that uh, I was taking an English course, and because it was summer, there was only four people uh, in the class. Two guys and two girls. And uh, it ended up just being two guys for the most part, because the girls just either skipped out, and every now and then they would come in. So we, maybe only once or twice throughout the entire session for the summer, had maybe all four people. And then, maybe now and then we had three, but typically just me and this other guy. One class day, um, we were going in, and the teacher's name, last name was Raper. 
R A P E R. So you weren't sure, you know, we, we just never called her by her last name or her first name. You know, it was very informal. But of the stories that we had to read for uh, that day in class and discuss, um, go figure that there was only her, two guys, and the topic of the class, female sexual awakening. So the short stories that we read were pretty much on that and to say that it was uh, a bit discomforting and uh, disturbing to discuss uh, female sexual awakening with the professor, you, you know, and it's just two guys in there was just kind of odd. So I'll leave it at that. I'm running out of time. Bye.